So we've all seen the sort of controversial liquid glass redesign Apple just announced for all of their devices. And the first thing I thought when watching the event is, how can I rebuild this in Fusion? And as I thought about it, I realized I just made a similar effect just a few weeks ago. And shout out to this guy for thinking the exact same thing. So what I want to do is show you how I went through and adapted the workflow that I used on the raindrops video to recreate Apple's liquid glass effects. And all of the other little things I needed to stack on top of it to get it looking great. I also made a fully editable Fusion preset for you that you can buy on my website. It just cuts out all the time needed to recreate this effect yourself, makes it reusable, and makes it really easy to customize. Plus, it'll help me make more of these types of videos in the future. So if you want to help support me that way, check it out, link down below. And if you're not interested, I'm going to be showing you exactly how to recreate it in this video. So the first thing that I thought about when building the effect is all of the different elements that we're going to need and how those will connect together, which all of that just makes it really easy to know where to start and also how to make it procedural. So that way we can we can put anything into it and it automatically creates that, that liquid glass effect. So the input that we're going to take is a bitmap input, and that's just a white and black image, and that's going to drive rest of it. But even before we start doing the light refraction and all of that, we need to blur the background and add in some chromatic aberration if we want to match the effect Apple made. Then after all of that, we're going to add in a drop shadow to separate it from the background, an inner shadow to give it some like glass reflections, and then a small edge outline that we can rotate around it. And that last part with the edge outline has a really cool setup. So now that we have a plan and we know everything that we need to create, let's get started. All right, in DaVinci Resolve, I just have this little kind of abstract animated background that we're going to be working with. And I'm actually going to come up to the titles and just grab some text because I want there to be something a little bit brighter in here. So let's just type hello world. Now instead of taking this text into the fusion page or making a fusion composition, I'm going to come up to the effects tab, come down to effects, grab this fusion composition and drop it right above the text. And by default, this is not going to do anything. So we need to switch over to the fusion page. And what I want to do right away is do shift space and add in a media in node. When I connect this into the media out, I can set the source to be a background. So what that's going to do is pull in everything below this fusion composition and load it in so that way we can start working with it. That makes it really nice because once I build this effect, I can move it back and forth to retime it. I can duplicate this and use a second version and I don't need to rebuild that effect every time. I've, I've sort of made a bit of a template that I can use throughout my project. All right, so back on the Fusion page, the first thing that we need to do is set up our input or the bitmap that's going to be driving the entire effect. And for that, we're going to use a bitmap node. And the reason that we're going to use this is because I can take something like a rectangle, which is technically already a bitmap, and I can plug this into the bitmap and then that can send it out like all over the place. But I could also take something like a text node and if I, you know, just put something in here, I can plug this into the bitmap and it's going to, to convert this from an image into the bitmap so that way it can be used. So using the bitmap just allows me to use anything to drive this effect. With the rectangle, let's add in some corner radius because Apple does not like to have any sharp corners in their software. And then we're going to start by blurring the background. So if I do shift space and add in a blur node, I'm actually going to create a separate stream. So I'm going to take the media in, plug this into the blur. And then if I view this, I'm just going to add a bit of blur to, to put that out of focus. And now we can start working on the refraction. We're going to come back and do that chromatic aberration in just a minute. Now, if you remember back to the raindrops video, you know that we used a create bump map node and a displace to drive all of that, that water refraction. And it's going to be the same thing inside of this video. So if I do shift space and add in a create bump map node, what I can do is plug the bitmap into this and then view it off to the side and you can see it's going to create a bump map. It's kind of hard to see what's going on on the edges. So let's come to the height scale and set this to be something like 50 and set the filter size to be 5. Now we kind of get this rainbow effect around the side and that's just some information that the displace node is able to use to give us that realistic light refraction. Let's do that. Let's click on the blur node, do shift space and add in a displace node. Now if I view this off on the right, it's still going to be blurred. But if I take the create bump map and plug this into the displace, you can see it's going to start moving it just a little bit. We want to set the type to be X and Y, and we want to set the X offset and the Y offset down to negative 5. If we don't set these to negative 5, it's going to actually move the entire image instead of just the one area that we want to displace. But as I move this X refraction, you can see it's going to do something around the outline of the shape that we created. I want to link the X and Y together, so I'm going to right click on the Y refraction, do expression, and then use the pick whip tool and drop this on the X refraction, so that way those two are both linked. And to preview, we're going to start by doing negative 1 as the value. We do have to type that in. Uh, this, the slider doesn't go that far. And now we're getting really close to making this effect look really good. But before I show you what to do next, let's go ahead and isolate it so the blur is just affecting what is inside of the shape. And instead of adding the mask onto the blur node, 
we're actually going to add this onto the displace node, come into the display settings, and then go to multiply by mask. So it's going to isolate our displace and blur all to this one section. Now what I'm going to do is take the output of the displace and then merge this up with our media in. The reason I'm doing it this way is so that way we can add in a drop shadow in between the displace and the merge so that way we can add in some background separation. So we'll do that in just one second. For now, back in the displace node, we want to grab the spread and then just bring this up a little bit. And you can see this is going to start to give us that, that glass effect. But the cool thing about this is it is all procedural. So I can come into this rectangle, I can move it around and it's going to update the effect based on where this is all at and you can see as I bring this down it'll start reflecting the text up in the top and this is just a really cool and really satisfying effect to play around with all right to add in some more separation let's add in that shadow right away so after the displace node do shift space type in shadow then we're going to grab this and then just offset it a little bit to the bottom and then bring the softness up and the alpha way down apple does not usually have their shadows too intense so if you're really trying to, to replicate their look you know, keep that alpha value well below 0.5. And the other thing I wanted to show you right away is if I add in some text, let's just do glass, make this a little bit bigger and let's say bold. If we plug this into the bitmap node, all of this is gonna update so the text has the same effects. And this is something that you'll notice when you actually start playing with it. Depending on what you're using, whether it's a shape or text, the, the refraction settings need to be a little different. So I could come into the displace, I could either make the refraction a little bit less intense, I could make it more intense, and I can also change how much this actually spreads throughout the text. So there's, there's a bunch of different settings that you can customize depending on you know which shape you're using, but just know you might need to use different settings to get everything looking good. All right, let's connect this rectangle back up and now let's work on that chromatic aberration that we talked about earlier. This is something that I want to apply before the actual displace node. So right after the blur, I'm gonna add in a transform and I'm actually just gonna add in a second one right away. The first one we're going to name to red offset and the second one we're going to name to blue offset. In the settings tabs of these nodes, I'm going to turn off all the channels except for the one that I want it to affect. So in that one, it's the blue channel and in this one, it is the red channel. Now on the blue offset node, I'm going to come back to the controls tab, right click on the center X and Y and do expression. For this, I'm going to type in red offset and then do dot center. So that way the center control is linked between the two, but I don't want them to be exactly linked. I wanted to do the opposite. So I can press this invert transform down at the bottom. And what's going to happen when I move these channels back and forth is it's going to separate the red, blue, and green channels apart. The green one stays in the middle, red one goes to one side, blue one goes to the other side. If I make this really subtle, we're getting a little bit of chromatic aberration inside of our rectangle. This is something that it's easy to overdo it on, so be careful, don't push this too far. All right, let's add in some of those finishing touches to really round this out and make this a really good effect. So the first one is going to be a bit of an inner shadow to add in some kind of a light reflection on top of the glass to really help give that that 3D feel. The way to do that is getting an inverted version of this mask. And normally what I could do is add in a background node, take the output of the bitmap, and for this, I'm just gonna set this to be white. I could come to the settings tab and just do apply mask inverted. And that's basically what we're gonna do. But instead of doing that in the background node, I'm gonna add in another bitmap node, connect this into the flow right here, and then press the invert button in this node. This might seem like an extra node just to have an extra node, but it's not, it's actually really important. And we'll talk about that in a second. After this background, I'm gonna add in a shadow node. And if we view this off to the side, what I can do is drag this up and to the left, and it's gonna start to add in a shadow. For this, I wanna set the color to be white. And to make it so it really stands out, I'm gonna take the output of this bitmap, plug it into the shadow as a mask, and then do multiply by mask. And that's gonna isolate it so the shadow just appears inside of our rectangle. And this brings me to why we need this bitmap node. If I zoom into the edges, you can see there's this little bit of an outline uh, coming around the sides of our rectangle. So inside of the bitmap node, all we need to do is grab this high slider and drag this down until that line disappears. And now everything looks good. So we'll take the output of the shadow, drag it into the output of this merge node, and that's gonna layer it on top of our rectangle. Inside of the shadow settings, we wanna come to the controls, add in a bunch of softness to it, and then bring the alpha value way down. Again, this one just needs to be really subtle, uh, probably even more subtle than the normal drop shadow. But if we disable this merge node just to get a before and after, you can see it adds a nice like reflection to this rectangle. Now let's work on creating that outline around the side of the shape that we can move around to any side. And the nice thing about this is we're going to start building it the same way we would build any outline. So that's going to be with a erode delete node. With this, I'm going to take the output of the background node and then view this off to the side. And what we can do is shrink this in. So if I, or if I grow this, it's going to, going to expand it inside of our shape. And basically what we need to do is tell Fusion to only show this inside of our rectangle. 
So let's add in a merge node and then take the output of the bitmap and plug this into the foreground input. To make this easy, we're just gonna use the mask operator mode. So that way it only shows the outline where those two intersect. If you guys wanna learn more about the operator modes inside of a merge node, check out my Fusion Friday linked up top here somewhere. Now that we have our basic outline, we can actually merge this up so we can see it on our main image. We're gonna shrink this down so it's really small. We don't want this to stand out too much. And we need to tell Fusion to only show that up in the top corner or maybe in the bottom corner of the screen. So the way that I found to do that is to add in a blur node, take the output of the bitmap and plug that in right there, and then add a ton of blur to this to give it nice soft edges. And this is gonna give us a nice fall off in the outline so that way it doesn't just stop in one spot, it gradually fades out. So to apply this, I'm gonna add in another merge node, take the output of the blur, plug it in right there, and you guessed it, we're gonna use another operator mode and set this to be mask. Now what's going to happen inside of this merge node, if I move this shape off to the side, we can have it only apply this outline on one side of the shape. Really pretty cool and it has that nice fall off thanks to that blur node. The way to automate this and make it so we just have one slider to change is to right click on the center X and Y, go to modify width and then do vector result. And inside of the modifiers tab, what this allows us to do is offset the image uh, like a set distance from the center and then we can change the angle that that's going. So if I if I bring this up to one of the corners and bring up the distance, we can change how, how intense that light actually is. And then we can rotate it around the circle just like so. All right, and to finish this off, let's add in another reflection on the bottom side that isn't quite as intense since that seems to be what Apple is doing. Let's add in another merge node and set this up the same way. We'll grab the blur, plug this in right here, set the operator mode to be mask, and then we're gonna use an expression to link this. So if I do expression, we'll do merge five dot center, and then press this invert transform button to make sure it's down in the bottom corner. And I did actually mess this up. What we wanna do is have the, the merge three coming in as the background input, the blur coming in as the foreground input, and then these two merges will merge together afterwards, all right? And when we do that, we can still see both of those outlines. So in the merge that is combining those two outlines, we wanna grab the blend and bring this down for the second one so it's not quite as intense. And then in the merge that brings both of these together and puts it on the image, we can use the blend to change its overall intensity. So I like to drop this to something like 0.5. And now anytime we wanna customize this, we just need to go to merge five here, come to the modifiers tab, change the angle so that way it only affects one side. And that is how you set up the liquid glass effect inside of DaVinci Resolve Fusion. I hope you guys learn a lot with this. Now I wanna quickly take a look at the preset that I made, which makes this whole process even easier. So in a blank fusion composition, how you would set this up is by doing shift space, typing in with glass, and when you press enter, it's gonna add in this node. Everything's gonna go white, and that means that we just need to add in some sort of mask to it. So if I grab a rectangle, I'm gonna plug this into the whip glass tool. And once I add in some corner radius, we already have this liquid glass effect. So up in the inspector, I can do stuff like change the spread and the refraction amount. And all of this is using that same displace node. If I double click on this tool, you can see the whole setup right down here. It's very similar to what we just made, but I have all these controls that you would customize pretty often up in the inspector so that way it's they're easy to see. I also added in this frosted color, so if you really need to help with something like accessibility, hint, hint, Apple, you can do that right there. We also have the chromatic aberration, just one slider to change you know, how intense that is, as well as a blend if you just wanna kind of fade it away but still have those channels separated. We have the controls for the outline right here as to the, the size of it. We can change its direction as well as just the overall blend. We have controls for the inner shadow as well as the outer drop shadow. So this tool is just really nice, it makes it easy. And if you ever need to go in and customize something, you can just double click on it find the section, so this is the refraction. You can just come in there, customize it all. And again, by picking that up, you really help support the channel, make it so I can do these recreation videos more in the future. So if you guys have any questions about this, just let me know in the comments below and let me know what you think of the effect. I'll see you in the next one.